Good morning, church. Today is Veterans Day, a day to honor all who have served in our nation's armed forces. In November 1919, President Wilson proclaimed November 11th as the first commemoration of Armistice Day, marking the end of World War I, with the following words which still ring true today. To us in America, the reflections of Armistice Day will be filled with solemn pride in the heroism of those who died in the country's service and with gratitude for the victory, both because of the thing from which it has freed us and because of the opportunity it has given America to show her sympathy with peace and justice in the councils of the nations. In 1954, Congress changed the name to Veterans Day in recognition of all those who served and particularly those who fought in World War II. Veterans Day continues to be observed each year on November 11th, regardless of what day of the week November 11th falls. Holding the observance of Veterans Day on November 11th not only preserves the historical significance of the date, but helps focus attention on the important purpose of Veterans Day, a celebration to honor America's veterans for their patriotism, their love of country, and their willingness to serve and to sacrifice for the common good. Veterans, to all of you, we are so grateful for the sacrifices made by you and your families during your time of serving on our behalf. Thank you for your service. The psalmist writes in Psalm 119.97, Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Today we're wrapping up our series on Meditate, Percolate. I hope you all have been percolating on this message this week. It sure beats worrying about Tropical Storm Nicole, which has made another mess of our area. I pray that you all are safe. Bible meditation is different from meditation as we know it in our society. Meditation, as popularly taught by Eastern philosophies, tells you to empty your mind. That's the exact opposite of what the scriptures say. Bible meditation means filling your mind with the truth that God has revealed. David was a king. Imagine the pressures and the problems, the demands and the decisions that he faced every single day. Yet he said, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Have you observed that we waste an awful lot of time doing mundane things such as holding on the phone, waiting in line, or driving to work? In big cities, people often spend an hour or more going to work, and the same again coming home. That's 10 hours a week, or 40 hours a month, 480 hours a year. That's 20 24-hour days a year commuting to work. That's an extraordinary amount of time. The question is, what are you doing with your mind during this time? Just driving along with your mind in neutral? Or listening to the radio, a CD, or music on your smartphone? Or maybe just getting angry at all the drivers around you? What a great time to get your mind in gear. And what an opportunity to grow spiritually and mentally. What exercise does for your body, meditation does for your soul. In Proverbs 23 verses 6 and 7, the Bible says, Do not eat the food of a begrudging host. Do not crave his delicacies, for he is the kind of person who is always thinking about the cost. Or in the New King James Version, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. You see, our thoughts dictate our actions. A sign on someone's office wall read, You are not what you think you are, but what you think you are. If you want your life to be different, start thinking different thoughts and meditate on God's word. Psalm 19.8 says, The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Another word for precepts is statute or law. 
And as we look at that verse in greater context, let's look at verses 7 through 14 together. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. And the commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. And the decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. This Old Testament prayer shows that the psalmist regarded meditation as an utter necessity to his spiritual life. And if that was true for him in his day, how much more vital is it for us today? We need to bathe our minds each day in the waters of God's word so that our words and our thoughts are indeed pleasing in God's sight. So I hope that you are encouraged to use your time at the start of the day, during a coffee break, at lunchtime, during your commute, and before going to bed at night, to reflect upon the truth of God's Word. The greatest changes in your life will come through the process of meditating on God's Word and letting the Word of God filter and percolate through your mind and into your life. Sounds like time for coffee with God's Word. And if you like photography, this will make sense too. First class Bible reading calls not for snapshots, but for timed exposure. Therefore, dive in. And if you're looking for a Bible study that will help you to dive a little deeper, we've got a bunch of them at the Village Church. Sunday morning, we've got Bible studies for youth at 9 and 11 a.m. and for adults at 10 a.m. On Mondays, We've got breakfast and Bible study for high schoolers at 8 a.m. On Tuesday, we've got a men's prayer breakfast and Bible study at 8 a.m. Our ladies meet for Bible study at 10 a.m. We have a senior adult group that meets for Bible study at 2 p.m. on Tuesdays. So we invite you to join us and develop the habit of percolating on God's Word. Now, some other things that are coming up at the Village Church. Our Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Packing Party is tomorrow from 10 a.m. until 12 noon. Uh, and also, you can start bringing your own shoeboxes because Shoebox Dedication Sunday is November 20th. Our Grief Share group is having their Surviving the Holidays luncheon this Sunday from 1 until 3 p.m. Our Divorce Care group is having a special Surviving the Holidays event, and that'll take place on Wednesday, November 30th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Pancakes and Pajamas is a Christmas event for our children It'll be held on Sunday, December the 11th from 4 until 8 p.m. And you can sign up for that online or call the church for more details. And finally, Unity Through the Nativity, with nativity scenes from all over the world, will be at the Village Church Thursday and Friday, December 15th and 16th from 6 to 8 p.m. And on Saturday, December 17th from 4 to 8 p.m. And so we encourage you to come on out and be a part of that event. And don't forget to join us this Sunday for worship at 9 or 11 a.m. And if you can't join us in person, be sure to check in online for worship on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel at The Village Church at World Golf Village. We hope to see you on Sunday. And now that the rain is headed out, have a great weekend.